What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. You might ask, why I have a mess behind me? Why I have all these rods, all this tackle, all over my boat? That actually happens quite a bit. I mean, you know, trying to get ready for tournaments and stuff, but not this much tackle. The reason is, I am fishing a General Tire World Championship. Can't tell you where it's at, but I am gonna tell you this, it's in Minnesota. And I, basically how this all works, I figured I would switch th some things up. I know a lot of you have been asking for the, what is in my boat. This is a Northern fishery, you got large mouth, you got small mouth. And so I figured I'd show you what I put in a major league fishing boat when I have no idea where I'm going. So I figured it'd be a little fun. Um, right now I gotta rig up a couple more rods. I got a toad to put on and I got to put some new line for this little bandito bug right here. So then I will be done. I know I, it, it doesn't seem like I have enough rods up there. So you might give me crap for that, but I'm just telling you, you just got to be ready. Cause literally the problem is in this deal, the biggest issue is you just don't know what you're going to have to deal with. Like it might be current, it might be big, large mouth, small mouth. You, you just don't know. So. Rather than not have what you need, bring it all. It's what I've learned. Trust me, the times I try to consolidate and I miss something, I'm pretty sad <laughs> when I don't have it. The big thing is there's a good mixture of large mouth and small mouth and, 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 and the key is, is guessing correctly. You, you might go to a lake that looks like a large mouth lake and it's actually a small mouth lake and, and there's just more small mouth population in there. And then you might go to a, 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 a lake that looks like a, a small mouth lake and it's a better large mouth lake. I've, I've seen that actually happen up here. So I'm just looking at it, trying to sort of keep my open mind. Um, and that's why I got what I have. I, mean, I have crank baits, jerk baits, chatter bait, jigs, top waters, wacky worms. I mean, I got it all. I mean, I, I probably could rig up four or five more rods, but that would just take, that'd just be too much. <laughs> that'd be just too much. <laughs> It's like crazy. Like rigging stuff, getting your stuff together. It just, it just like, it's like a dang. So especially for this kind of stuff, it's like you literally can never pack enough. I'm like tying stuff on that I literally doubt I'll ever make a cast with. And like the crazy thing is, is you, most of the time you don't. You literally probably won't even make a cast. Mm. I hook shot. It's rusted pretty good. So, that guy's ready to roll. Look, like we're getting there. One more rod. Crashing 17 pound test out. Thought about putting 20 on. I have a rod that's already rigged with like a, a jig with a heavier, heavier weight. But, so like people ask me sometimes like, what's the, how often do you change your line? It really just depends. Like if I'm just fishing a weeknight tournament, I don't change it very often. But if I'm fishing for $100,000, you start to change it a lot more. <laughs> you start to change it a heck of a lot more. Now the thing is we, do, we are fortunate. Most professional anglers get their line supplied. So it is something, but I still, it, it's tough on me. I still will go and stretch my line out and try to get the most out of it, you know? And, and the, and the big thing is, is not taking off too much. I'll try to take off a decent amount right here, but I'm not gonna spool the whole, I'm not gonna take off the whole spool. So just take off, mm, probably about, I'll take off about 100 yards. Cause I wanna make sure if I'm like casting or flipping, any of that stuff, I wanna make sure that I have enough. But most of the time, if I'm making those little smaller pitches, especially this is my flipping rod, I should be good with 100 yards. You can even get with like 75, yards maybe potentially there's a there's a knot down there i'd sort of like to go to the knot we'll go to the knot just because knots down there are pretty good ways man that feels so good when you have new line on your rods <laughs> it's like all memory coily or anything like that it's just like you know you're ready to go you can tell the difference especially when you like make a little pitch or something so it's not that much right there all right <sighs> So now we got a little bit of the, more of the work. We got to bring all this over to the Toyota boat. Let's go find out where the Toyota boat's at first. So you hear like the generator running. That's basically charging all the boats. Sort of crazy. We don't actually have to like worry about gas or any of that stuff. So that's, that's sort of a nice part of, gig, part of the gig. Got to find the Toyota boat though.
There we go. Right next to the loudest generator while we're trying to fill. I mean, that's just how it is. So I guess we're gonna have to probably talk about what I'm gonna put in that boat over here. You can see the B-roll, but I'm gonna tell you guys all that over here. Obviously you can tell it's a pile of tackle, lots of tackle. Treble hook box, you guys have told, seen that. Treble hook box is very important. Walking baits, deep diving jerk baits. I got some, uh, I'll show you one of my favorite ones. This is a new one that I've started to throw a little bit. It's called the Loco Special. This is a 13 fishing jerk bait. And this one right here is called Regurgitated Shad. They even put like these like, like dead eyes in it. It's sort of cool. Like, that's probably one of the prettiest shad colors I've ever seen. Seriously, I'm not even joking. That's awesome. Obviously, I have a lot of other jerk baits as well in there. Ned rigs, Largo shads, three inch and four inch, swim jig trailers, some more jerk baits. This is all swim jigs right here. Whole bunch of swim jigs. Got some toads. Of course, you gotta have a whole bunch of bandito bugs. Magic shads, DT6 box, vibrating jig, custom hand poured worms, some five inch lunker logs. My jig box, that's sort of like everything from finesse jigs to like flipping jigs. Crack and cross, small jerk baits, cover pops. Okay, this is all just frogs, like regular style frogs. Hook box, some more top waters, walking baits, popping frogs. I did 10 box. More deep diving crankbaits, drop shop Nico. So I sort of always put that like there. I got some little hair jigs because we are up north, little small ones. This is like my weight box. And just just my typical weights. Some rattle and neds, some ned heads. These are just like a bunch of like shaky heads and like slider heads. And then last but not least, like my finesse swim bait heads. I think that's that's really about it. Like not even joking. So that's pretty much what I have. I always try to consolidate a lot of my stuff and my soft plastics into boxes. I will have like a couple loose packages here and there, but yeah. So that's basically what I have right here. Hopefully it's enough. I think it should be fine. I'm not saying I'm gonna catch them, but I should have plenty of tackle to catch a bass. All right, let's see how many trips. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it seven, seven trips. Now I'm gonna like try to do too much. I'm gonna try to consolidate this a little bit. We got him. Don't worry, Brody, you're good. You're good. Let's see if we can get this. <laughs> Top heavy. What's that, three? Heck yeah. I wonder how many rods we have. A lot. Let me tell you that right now. It's two, Ooh. Four, eight, ten. Twelve, fourteen, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-six. Hold up, I'm gonna move these over here. Thirty. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. I think it's 35 rods. Right at 35. If I can't catch a bass, it's my own dang fault. I got all the rods rigged. I feel like I got every type of bait rigged that I think I'm gonna need. There's actually a couple more that I probably could grab, but we're not gonna grab that. What is this for? I need some bags. I might have to think about how I'm gonna go about this. Ready to roll. One of the last trips, I had to do one more trip in the back of my truck, just in case I didn't forget something. I just gotta make sure I didn't forget anything. But we should be good, should be right at seven. Ah, heck with it. It's a wreck and a half. Casey's laughing at me, I'm over here going through my last second preparation. I wanted to make sure I didn't miss something. I think I think we're good. I might bring these lipless, but I, it's not supposed to blow tomorrow, so I'm not that worried about that. One thing I will throw in there is some skitter pops, some chug bugs in there, some smaller poppers. 
I knew I'd find something that I would want to bring. Got some river cranks, Largo shads. I should have plenty of those in that one box. Top tool. Man, I could I could probably bring that, but I wouldn't really throw it. I don't see myself throwing him. I might grab the hook. Yeah, I'll grab those two hooks. But you never know. I'm going in, Brody. Going in. If I don't come back, call for help. We'll get out of here. Maybe. We got out of here. Oh. I found two more boxes I could bring. I don't think I'll use that. I'm not really using it all year. A jig chunk. I might grab some flukes, just in case, some fluke style stuff. So, one last one. I doubt I'll even use these. I'm almost pretty positive I won't. I do two or three, call it good. Does it save me? All right, y'all, this is the last trip. Because we got that generator right next to us, it's gonna be a little tough to show you all the stuff, but maybe we'll grab a GoPro or something. Anyway, thank you all for watching this. This is what I got rigged. All this stuff is going in that boat over there. I don't know what I'm gonna have to deal with, but this is about what I would probably rig for any of the trips. If you guys are going up north, that's about what I would bring. Large mouth stuff, small mouth stuff, got it all. Let's see if we can't catch a couple.